Hey everyone! Today I have this really beautiful book that I like to look at with you. It is the Harmonia Macrocosmica by Andreas Celarius. Or if you look at his German name, Andreas Keller. This is the finest atlas of the heavens. It's a beautiful title. And you can see that this is quite old. It was published in 1660. And it was part of a large project. A seven part project, in fact that was initially dreamed up by Gerard Mercato that you might know from the Mercato projection um, one of the ways in which you can depict the earth on a flat surface so he imagined that it would be quite nice to create a multi-volume atlas that depicts both ancient and modern geography, the seas, the sky, the different cities. And um, I don't think it happened during his lifetime. But the idea was picked up by Johannes Jansonius. And um, the Harmonia Macrocosmica is part of that idea. It was the sixth volume in the project. So, it's a really, really beautiful book with 29 copper plates. And I really like this edition too. It's in English, German, and French, so I can practice a little bit. And I don't think we'll have time to look at all the different plates, but I'd like to have a look at the first few with you because I think they're really interesting. So we'll start with plate one. The planisphere of Ptolemy, or the mechanisms of the heavenly orbits following the hypothesis of Ptolemy laid out in a planar view. So you probably know that Ptolemy was a, um, an astronomer, I guess, a mathematician um, in antiquity. And he's known for the geocentric worldview. See here the Earth being at the center of the universe, and um, Gelarius depicted this here with this beautiful um, scenario. Here we have. The Earth at the center, and we're looking towards the North Pole, so that's interesting too. We see Europe here, here's uh, Asia Minor, the Arabian Peninsula, India, here we look at China. So I guess there's some guesswork over here. And uh, the northern part of Asia. We have the African coastline here across the Mediterranean. And we have um, North America and the Caribbean 
here would be South America and you can see for example this would be California depicted as an island off the coast of the continent so this was um, created at the time when people didn't quite know what the continents looked like people in Europe knew that North America was there but not quite how the land was laid out And here we have Mundus Sublunaris Quatta Elementa Complectans. So this is the sublunar world of the four elements. And out here we have the seven orbs of the different um, celestial objects. We have Orbis Lune orbit of um, the moon we have let's see it uh, mercury so mercury then we have um, curriculus veneris so venus then Outside of Mercury and Venus, we have the Sun, Via Solis, Circulus Martis, Mars, Orbita Jovis, Jupiter, and Curriculum Saturni, Saturn. So they would all go around the Earth. And then outside you have the 12 signs of the zodiac. Let's go through them. Sagittarius, Scorpius, Libra, Virgo, Leo, Cancer, Gemini, Taurus, Aries, Aquarius and Capricornus. So, what's interesting is we just said there's the four elements of the sublunar world, and at the time people thought that the superlunar world, so this area outside of the moon. There was a fifth element that was unchanging, which is why this sphere was governed by eternal and unchanging laws that did not apply to the sublunar world. So that there really was a big difference between this part and this part. All right, and then down here in the corner. We actually have a depiction of Ptolemy sitting here, probably with a pupil and a map of the world. I really like these different colors here. Okay, let's look at the next place. Because the interesting thing is that Gelarius didn't just create one plate of this geocentric worldview. He created another one that he called the Xenographia, a Xenograph. And here we're looking at the same worldview, but from a perspective. So the first one was a little more schematic and here we're looking at it sort of from the side we have a much much bigger earth at the center again quite interesting here the um, coastline of Europe being quite accurate Africa being largely accurate 
just like Asia you can see all the different islands here um, up here this is Korea in the corner and this might be Japan and interestingly down here in the shadow we have some big island that's being hinted at or a continent it says Nova Hollandia, so New Holland this would be Australia and here on the bottom we have another landmass or on the bottom in the south I guess I should say it's a bit hard to read but you should say Terra Australis Incognita so a southern unknown landmass and I'm not sure what it means at the time they were guessing that Antarctica existed and just drew it in or whether there had been um, some hints, maybe some ships that had seen Antarctica I'm going to have to look that up we can see the zodiac being depicted here Then we have the, uh, the sun, sorry, not the moon, Sol. Luna, the moon would be over here, much smaller. And we have the different planets depicted as stars with their names, Saturnus, and their astrological symbols. We also have Polus Arcticus, so the North Pole, Circulus Arcticus, we have the Zodiac Axis, the South Pole, Polus Antarcticus, here we have the Tropic of Capricorn, and the Tropic of Cancer, so there's really quite a lot of information included here. That will be the second plate and then let's have a quick look at the third plate still in the geocentric world view And this time we see the orbits of the different celestial bodies depicted as spheres and in this case they're depicted all, almost equally so they're gaining a little bit in thickness the further out you go but there's not much of a difference in terms of um, how far they're apart and of course today we know that this is not accurate but even at the time this is not quite the way it was described in uh, the Almagest of Ptolemy um, there was no empty space in between the spheres the way it was imagined initially so there's some artistic freedom here but it looks pretty nice I really like this and I just really love the colors that were chosen Alright, before we go to the next part I just want to show you one little detail Then here in this corner we have basically the same depiction the Ptolemaic worldview with the earth at the center and then over here in this corner we have the Eucodesis Brahe and this is something that I hadn't known before we have Earth at the center the moon going around the Earth and then we have the sun over here and the other planets going around the sun so here's a little oddity we're going to have a look at this in more depth in a minute
first. Let's have a look at plate four, something that's going to look very familiar to you. The planisphere of Copernicus, or the system of the entire created universe, according to the hypothesis of Copernicus, shown in plainer view. So I really like the depiction of this. The center of this magnificent plate is occupied by a gloriously radiant sun that we have here in yellow and orange and red. Its fiery rays, which reach out across the Earth's orbit, signal its central position in the universe as announced by the Polish astronomer Nicolaus Copernicus in his landmark book on the revolutions of the heavenly spheres of 1543. So Copernicus published his book more than a hundred years before the uh, harmonica macrocosmica. All right, so here we are. The gloriously radiant sun in the center. Copernicus here in the corner, dressed in beautiful pink. We have Mercury here on the innermost orbit, then Venus, and then a beautifully detailed Earth with the moon. We have Mars, looking quite big, and Jupiter, and what's interesting here is that Jupiter is not depicted alone, but together with four of his moons. They're called Io, Callisto, Europa, and Ganymede. I think altogether Jupiter has 16 moons, if I'm not mistaken. But these are the four largest ones, and you can actually see them with the naked eye under the right conditions. Right, and then over here we have Saturn. And on the outside, sort of finishing off the known universe are the constellations of the zodiac. And in this case, they are depicted with these beautifully detailed um, designs of the constellations. Here you have Gemini, the twins. You have Taurus, the bull. You have Aries. And Pisces. Looking just the way they would on a depiction of the different constellations. Just like with the previous plates, we also have a scenograph of the Copernican world system. I think this depiction of the sun might be my favorite one in the entire atlas. I think there's a reason why they put it on the front cover. It's just gorgeous. So it has beautiful sun at the center. This really serene expression. We have Mercury and Venus, and then we have the Earth, together with the Moon, four times. And the reason for that is that this is an illustration of how the seasons come to be. 
so here we have autumn then this should be let's see where does it say tonale vernum so this would be spring estivum so this should be summer and This should be winter then, but I'm not sure that's what it says. But it doesn't matter. So we have the four seasons and you might see here that this looks a little differently. It looks like someone crossed something out and then added a shorter word. Vernum instead of a long word like autumnale. You see that this is a little too long here for the crossed out section. So there was indeed an error made originally and it was corrected afterwards. And oddly enough, you can see the same thing up here and here and here and here and uh, unfortunately this was initially correct and is now wrong so there was a hyper correction the part out here is um, a grouping of the different signs of the zodiac according to the seasons so for example Aries here is put into autumn when in fact it should be in spring but never mind it's nonetheless a beautiful blade and of course here we get to the odd one the planisphere of Brahe or the structure of the universe following the hypothesis of Tycho Brahe drawn in plane view. So I hadn't heard of Tycho Brahe. He was from Denmark and he created this somewhat odd uh, combination of the geocentric and the heliocentric world system and that he posited that the earth is at the center of the universe the moon orbits the earth and so does the sun so you see here there's the orbit of the sun but then the other planets depicted here Mars, Jupiter and Saturn are going around the sun and not the earth so if the sun comes here to the other side of the earth then the orbit of Jupiter, Saturn and Mars would follow and here in the middle you see Venus and Mercury also orbiting the sun there's a depiction of Tycho Brahe and I really really love his facial expression he looks like a man who would come up with this sort of worldview I really like this again we have a Scenograph of the construction of the world according to Brahe, plate 7. And it doesn't look any easier on this uh, plate either. We have the earth at the center and a tiny little sun orbiting the earth. It looks a little sad, I think. <laughs> it's not quite happy with the system. We have the zodiac signs 
and we have the different planets and I don't know who drew this but I don't think it was easy to come up with this depiction but again I think it's really really gorgeous So, all in all, like I said, there are 29 plates in this book. And it would take a little too long to look at all of them. They're all really, really beautiful. I love the writing here. of colors it's just really really beautiful I'm also very fond of the later plates maybe we can have a look in depth at this in another video with the different star constellations star constellations as we know them today dating back to antiquity and even earlier but then there's also this one in which the constellations as we know them have been depicted by um, Christian mythology the northern in the southern hemisphere with different uh, figures from the Old and the New Testament and some different saints but like I said I think that's a topic for another time and for today let's close up this beautiful book watching